Councillor Sembrov now. Thank you, Mr Deputy Mayor. A month ago, when this planning proposal came to Council, I did not speak against it. I said that seniors living facilities, even of the type proposed here, was something that there is a need for in our LGA. And that position was reiterated when I went up to the Tallerwood village and saw what a lovely facility it is and what a credit it is to its pioneers and residents. But what I did say last month when this came before us was that there was clearly contradictory information circulating about a range of issues. I said that we should slow down and receive a briefing before making a decision about the planning proposal. I and others saw issues about necessary adjacent landowner consent, about whether community title uh, sub or subdivision represented a better outcome for the community, about the way in which the litigation was defended by council, about the completeness of information presented to councillors by staff, and questions about the speed with which this was being brought to the chamber. With the benefit of a month, I concur with Councillor Wheeler. All I can say is that we should have voted for that briefing. This has become an unholy mess. And there are more questions now than there were then. To be responsible representatives, it behoves us to be satisfied that both the outcome and the process have integrity and are in the public interest. And at this hour, I cannot be satisfied of either. Last month, the developer's representative addressed us and told us that all relevant landowner consent had been obtained. There was even an admission that this consent was prerequisite to the development proceeding. We've heard tonight that this is fiercely contested. The applicant is not the owner of Lot 1. The owner is the Tallerwood Community Association. I was concerned when the developer's representative claimed that they had never heard of the development company whose imprimatur was on dozens of the plans and reports associated with the scheme. A particular pre-lodgement document with council made a very specific and disputable claim about the ownership of lot one. The form even warns that misrepresentation is a breach of section 10.6 of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. I don't know why, if that statement was false, it was not proactively referred to the known title holders of Lot 1, why it wasn't referred to the authorities, who are the people who determine whether the breach was an honest mistake or a crime, or why the issue of the lack of consent of the owners of Lot 1 was not advanced with more vigour in the Land and Environment Court action, and where it is possible that had that information been provided, could have changed the outcome of that case. Council staff had been informed and reminded of this lapse in April 2021 and again in August and thereafter when the title holders of Lot 1 warned Council that their consent was needed and had not been given. I don't know if it's wise to charge Council staff to expend time and effort in preparing a gateway application or spot amendment to our LEP when it may be that future DAs for the construction of a dwelling, for example, may founder on the issue of the uh, lot one owner's consent. I don't know why, when the Land and Environment Court ruled in mid-November, why this unsolicited planning proposal was ready to present to us on the 14th of February, over the new year slowdown, when many other planning proposals, often with arguably greater merit or urgency, languish on our planning department's desks for vastly longer than this. I don't know why tricky assertions that this development is stage two of Tallerwood have been allowed to go unchallenged when the original prospectus for Tallerwood never gave any indication that an additional 19 lots on lot six was ever part of the staging. Tallerwood is complete. This is a new proposal. And if Tallerwood had been advanced those years ago as a 38 lot development, it may never have been approved. I don't know why the community management statement is claimed by some to confer enduring existing use rights when the same document states clearly that lot six can be the subject of exactly one dwelling and that those developer rights of access end when the original dwellings were built. I don't know why some clauses in that document are considered sacrosanct while others seem to be subject to the whim or claims of the applicant. I don't know whether the framing of the decision that we were invited to make last month which was that the development was going ahead in either case and that we were merely being asked about whether it would be better for the community if it was a subdivision or not, was correct at all. 
if that were the case, then why does the legal advice procured by the developer and appearing on one of the documents uploaded to our DA tracker state that the proposed development is fundamentally dependent on the ability to subdivide the site? And if the site can't be subdivided, the purpose of the remainder of the proposed development application is effectively altogether frustrated and our client would be prevented from making it the application to council as a result. It sounds to me like the wool has been pulled over our eyes. Even if the whole scheme was un if the whole scheme was unviable or impermissible, unless subdivision was granted, then I think councillors were entitled to that information when we were considering it last month. The only way that we can make this clearly impermissible planning proposal work is to break our own rules. And remember, the Land and Environment Court said that subdivision as proposed was a breach of not only of our LEP, but likely, the, uh, likely also the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act as well, a far higher and more controlling legislative Your control. Your time is up, Councillor Sampo. On indulgent 60 can seconds, you, Mr. Mayor. Finish off, please. I don't know if it's proper for us to endorse an application which forces the owners of Lot 1 to take responsibility and the costs of upkeep for the residue of Lot 6 when there is no legal obligation or mechanism to the require them to do so against their will. I don't know why the applicant is banging on the doors and dispensing legal threats to the retirees of Tallerwood Village and to others simply for asking questions about the integrity of this process, and I have also been bullied uh, as a result of the questions that I have asked. Colleagues, how can we possibly be party to this when these questions remain unanswered? For those who will reiterate your position from a month ago, how can you, when I am told that the Tullerwood residents have sought contact with each of you individually, repeatedly, only to find that you have not returned their calls? Unless you feel that all of these questions are either answered or irrelevant, then you must reconsider and you should join me in supporting the rescission motion. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any further? The motion is that we rescind last month's motion. If you think last month's motion should be rescinded, please raise your hand. In favour are Councillor Sam Brogno, Councillor Wheeler, Councillor Durek, Councillor Dogramachi. If you think last month's Motion should not be rescinded. Please raise your hand. Against is Councillor Wheeler, Councillor Sheeter, Councillor Cotlass, Councillor Calvert. Mr. Mr Deputy Mayor, I'm Councillor Wheeler and I do not have my hand up. Sorry? I think you need to go back through the names for the record. Councillor Reardon, did I? Councillor Reardon, Councillor Sheeter, Councillor Cotlass, Councillor Calvert. Sorry, that's four votes all. I'll declare the, I'll declare the motion lost on the casting vote of the Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> um,